is Pentecost Sunday. Thank you for choosing to be here and worship with us this day. We are Pilgrim United Church of Christ. We are part of the United Church of Christ, which is a denomination that is raising their voice as an alternative vision of what the church can be, where God is seen as all loving and inclusive. In a time when many feel like the church is narrow and out of touch, here we preach a progressive gospel. Here, barriers of ethnicity, class, and sexual orientation are torn down. Here, everyone is welcome. If you believe in God, some of the time, all of the time, or not really sure, you are welcome here. This is a place we hope you would come to renew your mind and your spirit, so let us take a deep breath and let us worship our God. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. 
Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in these days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. A word of God for the people of God. Good morning. This is an original song that Joan and I co-wrote this morning called Spirit of Love. delicately 
prepared spice of meat and a wonderful sauce. The chief did indeed think that it was the most delicious cut of meat that he had ever had. What is this, he said to the cook. It is tongue, great chief, said the cook. Oh my, said the chief. Who knew that the tongue could be so flavorful and so savory in taste? So the next day, the chief got to thinking, then what might be the worst cut of meat in the marketplace? He decided to really be adventurous, and so he set off his head cook to the task of finding the worst, the most distasteful cut of meat for his dinner the next evening. When the head cook brought the chief his evening meal, he took a bite and almost spit it out. Ah, oh, this is terrible. You have done well in finding the worst cut of meat anywhere. What is it? The cook said, it is tongue. <laughs> but the chief says, didn't I have tongue yesterday? And it was delicious and delicate. Yes, said the cook. But you know as well as I do that the tongue can be used to bring great delight. It can inspire the imagination and creativity, compassion and healing and peace, or it can be used to bring about cruelty and divisiveness. It can bring hate and poison to everything around it. A folktale from Nigeria. Tongues can be confusing things. I mean, tongues and language are so necessary to building our lives together in harmony and peace. Yet language, words, the use of our tongue is probably the source of our most destructive conflicts. The tongue can be used as a weapon as well as an instrument of healing and connection. And as Christians, we know the power of the tongue. We take great stock in language and words. We are called the people of the book. Just like our Jewish and Muslim brothers and sisters, they also call themselves people of the book, people of words, people of stories. We love the creation stories in Genesis in which God births the very cosmos into being by saying, and God said, let there be. In the beginning was the Word, right? And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Words, words matter. So it might be worth asking ourselves as we reflect on the day of Pentecost, a day when the intention of the message was so, so clear. And it came through so clear, even through different languages and traditions. Their intention in that gathered place so sacred that even though they were saying different words, they were able to hear each other. Have you ever had an experience like that? Hearing someone's heart, even though you might not understand the actual words. I had that experience one Sunday when I visited one of our churches, Sound with the UCC, and they have a bilingual service, but during prayer time, most people say they prefer to pray in their mother tongue. I did not speak Spanish, but there was this one woman, an elder of the church, Maria, and she always prayed in Spanish. And this one day, she stood before the congregation, which was both uh, Spanish-speaking and non-Spanish-speaking, and she prayed with such intention and with such power and with such passion that even those of us who were around her, who know I'm glad I know, 
we all were brought to tears because we felt her intention. We could understand, we could feel her plea before God. It was a moment I would never forget. It was my personal Pentecost moment. For the miracle of Pentecost is a miracle of hearing, of comprehension. It makes me wonder, are there tongues being spoken in our congregation that are not being heard? Are there people in our midst who we, we never hear, really hear what they're saying? Even those we may think are naysayers, because everyone needs to be heard. God sometimes even speaks to us through what we may feel are dissenting voices. The question is, how will each of us, you and I, receive the gift of Pentecost, the gift of hearing different languages and different words? Now, some say this day belongs to the church because this was the moment that the church was born. I think this day really belongs to the church because the world has not figured out how to commercialize it. <laughs> I mean, with Christmas, we're invited to be like those gift-bearing wise men and present those we deem worthy with gifts. And at Easter, yeah, we're celebrating the resurrection, but we also welcome spring and renewal, and that means we get new stuff. But Pentecost, Pentecost belongs to the church. The day when the faithful spoke through the utterances of their culture and tradition, and everyone was able to hear each other that's remarkable. That's miraculous. But I think, if I was in charge, I think we could all benefit from a Pentecost sale. <laughs> Can you see it? This weekend only, with a simple down payment, 2.5% interest, you can own the ability to comprehend what others are saying. Get your Holy Spirit machine right here, portable and energy efficient. We have operators standing by to take your order. <laughs> Shipping and handling included. We want this Holy Spirit machine to blow through your home and through your office, even your place of worship. When people say they are marginalized, you will understand, although you operate from the center. When people say they want justice, you will understand the generations of injustice behind that statement. When people say Black Lives Matter, you will understand the systemic destruction of black and brown people that makes that cry necessary. And when people assume a posture of prayer, kneeling or swirling or dancing, even shouting, you will hear in their silence their love of God and their connection with the holy. When people speak in anger, you will hear the remnants of the shame they are seeking to quiet. And when people talk of forgiveness, you will hear the echo of answered prayer. Two percent down. Pick up the phone right now and get your own Pentecost Holy Spirit machine. I think we can sell a few great fundraisers for the church. <laughs> their intention and expression because um, if we do listen to other people who don't 
come from where we come from or dress like we dress or eat what we like to eat or listen to our kind of music, it is so difficult to hear those people, what they are saying. Why are they so loud? Or oh, why can't they speak up? So for me, the miracle of Pentecost is not just in the speaking, but they were actually able to hear one another. That's amazing. They were able to hear one another no matter the language, no matter the cultural context, no matter the political affiliation. I think the Pentecost story compels us because it is a story of our time. We live in a world where words have become toxic, where the languages of our cherished is isms threaten to divide and destroy us. And those troubles are global and catastrophic. If we don't learn the art of speaking and hearing across the borders that divide us, we're going to burn the whole thing down. I mean, what would happen if the industrialists could hear the environmentalists. I mean, what would happen if those wanting to protect America from outsiders could hear those on the outside that have dreams and family values and a love for what this country represents? What would happen if those who found the power of using words to bully and ridicule, what if they could hear the heartbreak and devastation they bring with those words? Because here's the thing, no matter how passionately I disagree with your opinions or beliefs, I cannot disagree with your experience. That's why it's so important for us to hear each other's stories, to hear each other's hearts. Once I have learned to hear and speak your story in the words that matter most to you, I have a stake in things that I never had before. That means I can no longer flourish in your experience. I can no longer make you my other. And before God, I can no longer abandon you. Like those in the upper room on that first Pentecost Sunday, who gathered because what they had in common, a belief that there was another way to approach how their society was ordered. ones today who would dare to come together knowing one thing, that the way we have been going, the way we are going, is not leading us to justice or freedom or love or mercy for most of us. And this is not just a disservice to the world, it is a disservice to the church. Because we are here to speak new things into being. And if that happened, if that happened, I know for certain it would cause an atmospheric change. I know that it would cause heads to turn so swiftly and people to stand with such excitement that indeed it would be like a wind. A mighty wind was blowing through the place. And folks would find that moment intoxicated. 
in Acts when that very thing happened, when people found that moment intoxicating, the excitement, you could feel it. And somebody said, well, what does this mean? And some smart aleck said, eh, they've been drinking. They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these people are not drunk as you suppose, because it's only nine o'clock in the morning. Now I know, Pilgrim, we have some smart Alex that are saying, well, it was five o'clock somewhere. <laughs> but Peter tells them, this this is what the prophet Joel announced would happen. Joel, that ancient Israeli prophet who told the people about God's faithful word to let the people know that they would be repaid for the years of famine and drought and locusts. He told them if they just praise the Lord who worked wonders before them, acknowledging the Creator, acknowledging what is holy, that God promised to pour out God's Spirit. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my Spirit on every kind of people. Your sons will prophesy, also your daughters, your young men will see vision and your old men will dream dreams. People, Peter is telling them in that moment, because we have come together in a spirit of unity, because we have come together in a spirit of worship, this is the fulfillment of that promise. Your, your sons will prophesy, and also your daughters, your young men will see visions, your old men will dream dreams. So on this Pentecost Sunday, let us pray that a new Pentecost emerges over and over and over again. For indeed, we need the voices of our daughters to be honored as prophetic. We need for our young men to see and feel that they can articulate that indeed the world can be different. And we need our old men to dream dreams of what could be, not just what was. And we need to be able to hear each other for the glory of God. Amen. <laughs>